Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. After all, you're his father. If it weren't for you, that little pecker wouldn't be here anyway. This is episode 242, recorded September 20th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. My name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-hosts, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic no. film from this <laughs> radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Mm -hmm. Joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl, and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How you doing, Crystal? I am great. I am very happy to be peachy keen talking about this classic. Are or you not so Are classic? You? Or not so? Classic. Or not so classic? <laughs> classic or I, not? Or not. So not. Classic. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Also with us is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, co-host of decades for the nineteen seventies. All around nice guy and published mm -hmm. author. Thank you. Yay. Did, yeah, well, I'm the one who picked this mess. So if uh if people didn't like it, I've got no one to blame but myself. He's warning us ahead of time. Unfortunately, yeah. Chad Hunt could not be with us for some reason. Mm -hmm. Life was calling his name, and as it does, it won. But he will be back. So yes, uh decades of horror. And Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Playdown Media on several of their channels. Uh, Decades for the 70s and 80s is on the Wicked Horror TV channel. So check it out there. You'll find some cool stuff. Some There's things arranged by decades. There's things arranged by topics. Or you can even just go to Playdown Media, I think, .com and just see all the different channels they have that you could subscribe to i believe it's seven dollars a month or fifty dollars for a year which is a heck of a deal all right spoiler alert <clears throat> 42 year old movie and uh we're gonna spoil it we start out yep. with some basic details about the film our first impression some taglines and then uh, we'll just take off down the road maybe hopefully relating to the movie Yes. The topic yeah. this episode <laughs> is Fear No Evil from 1981. Written and directed by Frank Lelogia. Cast includes Stefan Arngrim, Elizabeth Hoffman, Kathleen Rowe McAllen, Frank Burney, Daniel Eden, John Holland, Barry Cooper, Alice Sachs, and Richard J. Silverthorne. Production company... Lalogia Productions, filming locations in the Rochester and Alexandria Bay areas of New York. Uh, it was filmed over seven weeks in 1979 and released January 16th, 1981. The whoops, alligator, that's left over from another movie. Oh, I was going to uh, say, what the hell? <laughs> the working title is Mark of the Beast. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, in France, it was known as Ethroy. Am I I'm probably not pronouncing that right, which means translates to fear. Uh, in Mexico, El... Help me out here, uh, Crystal. El Hijo del Demonio. Hijo? Is the H silence? Oh. You're, you're... Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I was m muted. <laughs> El Hijo <laughs> del Demonio. And so what's interesting, though, is that says the son of the devil, which I think it can be, but I would have said Diablo. Which yeah. is actually devil. Yeah, right. more of the son right. of a demon, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. uh Sin Sin Temor Temor al demonio. Without fear. Without of fear the of the devil. See, and once again, but I mean, you know, whatever. Demon devil. Yeah, demon devil. Tomato tomato. Yeah. Blame it on Google Translate. Yep. Yeah, did, I mean, you know, like it doesn't matter. Like they look, so they used to call me. Diablo Rojo, which is Red Devil. So that's why I'm like... <laughs> uh, they used to? When was that? Back in the old days of last week? <laughs> yeah, that's something awesome. like that. <laughs> wasn't there an old... Wasn't there a product years ago called Red Devil? Was there? Pro oh, I think there was like, like a... 
like a vacuum like a cleaner brand? or something? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. There was the Underwood deviled ham guy. He wasn't too scary. Deviled ham? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Anyway. The synopsis for this film. A high school student turns out to be the personification of Lucifer. Oh, welcome to my world. Two arch... <laughs> Two archangels in the form of human women take him on. And right there we see, I guess, um, Lucifer's priest. I mean, that does, I mean, that see that. It like, looks kind of creepy to me, but yet. Yeah. That doesn't. Silly at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Very and that pretty silly. much sums up the movie. I feel like the reason why I think it's a dinosaur head is because I feel like they're trying to make that a sacrilege to Jesus mm. because it's a dinosaur, you know? That's yeah. why I feel like it's a dinosaur head, but it does kind yeah, of look like a horse head, too. The left but... hand is like a stick or a bone or something. I couldn't really tell what yeah. that was. And the, the robe Set dressing the by whatever we had <laughs> lying around. Probably. So. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh. Sometimes we're thinking too hard. Yeah, that's yeah. the way you got to go. So I believe it's time for first impressions. And since this is Bill's pick, he already fessed mm. up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. So I remember seeing pictures of this in Fangoria and being very intrigued. And, and it had, it, there's some really good pictures. There's some interesting imagery. It's got, you know, some really crazy stuff going on. And I'm all about demons. I love, I love the whole, you know, using some of the, uh, you know, mythology of, of the traditional demons and devils and hmm. all that stuff thrown in there, which, which surprisingly, and a lot of people don't realize this, it is not actually in the Bible. You can what read part? it from the stuff that we all assume about the war in heaven and everything. A lot of that is more oh, no, Dante's Inferno. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, some of this, you know, there's a lot of these things that that we everyone assumes is in the Bible and it's not there. There's, you know, demons and devils. Why do people are not think really... that? I wonder. Well, because it's so ingrained uh, the whole the whole idea of evil and everything, and and it's great stuff. I mean, The Exorcist and everything. There's a lot of really cool things you can do, and this one takes it to the real extreme. And I love good versus evil, all that and everything. I I, I think this is just one of those films that its reach vastly exceeded its grasp and i do <laughs> admire that someone is making a first film and this is what they go for i mean you could have just made a movie about a bunch of people stuck in a house surrounded by zombies oh no wait that's me uh but this guy decided to go for the ultimate battle of good and evil with a budget that was just not well, up to the task frank lelogia was 25 um, yeah when they filmed yeah. this so good for him and, and, you know, took advantage of, um, you know, what they had. There's just, there's a lot of cool elements in there. But it just doesn't really hold together. It's got weird pacing. It does come alive at the end. Doesn't make a lick of sense, really. I'm trying to understand exactly, <laughs> you know. But it comes why. alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, watching it now, it's like, Hmm, were, were they were they really trying to make a statement here? You know, looking at it now, you, you get the feeling that it was very deliberate that this the man the, the the lead character was maybe meant to be like a gay kid who's being picked on by all these thirty year old teenagers that populate the high school. It's one of those films where everyone's way too old for high school. I, I teach at a high school. None of the people look like this. I have teachers that don't look as as old as some of these students. But okay. Um, <laughs> You know, there's just a lot of, there's just some weird things that just come out of nowhere. It does kind of stick with you. You know, how many, how many films does the hero slash villain bad guy get revenge on the bullies by suddenly making them grow breasts? Very few films actually have that yeah. scene in it, but, but this one does. <laughs> and you're just like, where did that come from? You know, there's just little, little scenes that happen and you think they're going somewhere but they don't. Uh, they just and they give you this sense of I, I'm uncomfortable watching this film. Like I don't know where it's going. The the one of the one of the main bullies takes out a gun and, and kind of like molests his 
poor girlfriend with the gun, and you're like, yeah, well, wow. that was that was unpleasant. But I'm sure there's going to be and a all payoff. she says is, I hope that's not loaded. I mean, I, well, well, <laughs> you know, but you're thinking there's going to be a payoff at some okay, point but, with this gun. Okay. The gun is never seen again, so maybe he lost it. I, I don't know. I need to point out something though, just real quick, and yeah. I hate to interrupt your first thoughts. No, no, go right ahead. That's a thing. That's a thing, and a woman was shot that way. By the way. Just so you accidentally, know. it's a thing. Accidentally, yes. It oh, was an old um, weapon, a really old gun. So, so it's not that crazy as oh, as crazy well, as it sounds, and what you see in the movie. Apparently, it's not that crazy. Well, listen, listen. There is nothing so weird. She didn't die. That luckily. it does. That someone's not doing it, and probably there's a magazine in Germany being published all about it. So you know, yeah, I, I get that. But, but it was just a strange scene in the movie because it, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't do anything. Um, there's just a lot of that. I, I really feel like this movie just feels to me like he had a couple of scripts and he sort of mashed them all together. And then at the last minute, the producers came and said, you know, it's big now zombies. So let's have some zombies show up for whatever reason and, and said, okay, break out the cornflakes. And, um, yeah, this movie's got a lot of weird stuff. It's, I, it's definitely worth a look, but I feel like, I feel like there was a potential for greatness here. And maybe just because this is a very, very inexperienced filmmaker, it, it didn't quite all come together. But again, I will give him full props for reaching so far for, to try to tell such a big story with so little to go with. Yeah. And, and Bill, I just have to say, <laughs> when I see your cattails coming up, <laughs> It's funny, yeah. yeah. From the corners, you know what I'm picturing? Yeah, like that. I'm picturing you are in that Gahan Gah Wilson cartoon where, like, the Cthulhu is puppeting him. <laughs> yeah. <with the> <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. just a top of Bill. And there's, there's, right, right. You know, I'm like, just, I'm gonna sit, yeah, it's like a hentai thing going on here. But okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much. How about you, Crystal? What did you think of Fear No Evil? Had you seen this before? No, I have not seen this before. Um, so uh, <laughs> this movie has horrible acting, uh, poopy story. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, and it's it. got a. I love when super, you use technical yep, terms. Yeah. <laughs> and it's got a super awkward, nude, really homoerotic shower scene. So what's not to love? Yeah, I loved it. Of course, there I loved it. It was really good. <laughs> I hated it, but I loved it too. Yeah. Okay. Cause it's uh, like, and the more I watched it, the more I was like, <laughs> what are we going am I here? witnessing here? The acting is so bad. Mm. So, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. But not only that, like they almost like wanted to mix in a little bit of like, I felt like they were trying to be like grease ish with like, the queen yeah, bee, the, you know, and, her, yeah, and then the, like the pink the, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they were trying to make a, a little bit of a horror version ish of that. And then like when he goes full, like goth dude, I was like, w are, are you Lucifer or a vampire? Like no joke. <laughs> <laughs> He's like this. He's yeah. like, <sighs> <sighs> and I'm like, no, no, yeah. you guys are horrible. This is so like, funny. Lucifer um, by way of hot topic. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, it was really something to behold there. And I love like I love God. I mean, I yeah, no, I mean, yeah, God is really? a, is a music culture, really. But you know, obviously, there's the look that goes with it. And I'm like, yeah, but that dude did, was very awkward in it. Yeah. And oh, oh my god, it's so crazy. The whole thing with the boobs. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. Uh... I just. I mean, it's one of those movies where I think you might, if I you have not seen know. this movie, you need to watch this movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you like yeah. horror movies, you will probably not like it, but watch it because you, you need to see this one. I was just and shocked. I was, as as yeah. we're recording this, it's on Shudder. It is. Yes. yes. This so, definitely needs a Joe Bob treatment, I think. It oh does. Yeah. This would be a yeah, natural for Joe Bob. I mean, hey, this, yeah. No, the no, penis no. is like, I was shocked. Yeah. Just wow. Like, me too. Just, just dangle, dingle, dangle. Yeah, dingle, like, dangle. You know? Waving in totally, the wind. Uh, un unapologetic. Yeah. 
No, yeah. I think there was, was there six guys in the shower at the time? Oh, I think there was more. It felt like just a gang, <laughs> just a gang. It was, busters of it was sausage. a sausage fest for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Crystal, you, so you brought weird. up something I did forget that I do like about this film. It's got a killer 80s soundtrack. It's yeah. got some, oh, yeah. I mean, well, you got the Ramones and the Boomtown Rats. I'm there, you know. But it's mm -hmm. actually the 70s. True, true. Yeah, uh, technically. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Anyway. That's yeah, true. that's okay. true. Okay. Is yep. that it? For yeah, now? yeah, for yeah. Pressure? I liked okay. it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I was I was going to say the, the main thing is the, the soundtrack. You got Talking Heads, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ramones. Uh, wasn't there B-52s? Was there B-52s? <laughs> uh, Maybe. Uh, there definitely was. Uh, my favorite was Patti Smith. Oh, yeah. Doing a version of "Hey Joe," the the Jimi Hendrix mm -hmm. uh, blues anthem, kind of, and she's kicker. I didn't realize she had done that. So I, I I, I've always that. liked her version. That's one of my favorite. Um, oh, it's very it's very emotional. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Psycho Killers, uh, Talking Heads, and mm -hmm. what was the other one? Love. It, it's a weird. It's got a weird. Was, I don't like Mondays the was building in there. or something like that. Um, yeah. Anarchy in the UK. Oh, right, right. Sex business, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Uh, yes, it was filmed in 1979. So we should mention that uh, Frank Lelogia is not a stranger to decades of horror the 80s because his other sort of horror or horror-adjacent flick, Lady in White, we covered, uh, oh, yeah. I think, about a year ago. Which <clears throat> yeah. I like quite a bit it has its faults mm -hmm. but it has a really kind of neat feel to it totally um, different from this yeah like, very different like <laughs> and and this one feels like there's there's parts of it that feel like that's <laughs> what ended up in lady in white you know like you were mm -hmm. talking about it feels kind of like grease feels kind of it's you know there's these kind of strange scenes but then there's this wow the family the the sun, the, they do this elaborate uh, prologue yeah, with a voiceover explaining all this uh, uh, religion to you, I guess, or, or backdrop of what it's supposed to be yeah. going on. And, uh, but, you know, what's, what's interesting is for me is it stays kind of true to that as you go on, but you better, you better have listened to that front part because, Mm -hmm. they're not going to explain it again stuff yeah. happens to fulfill those but it, but you're just better at listening and remember what they're saying what they said because uh and and you can tell it's low budget i mean a lot of it's uh the effects are kind of borderline Jeez. uh yeah and uh, so a lot of the extras a lot of the actors were uh, locals you know that they pulled in and and i do have a couple of stories here about some of them that I find to be kind of interesting. It was filmed at Bolt Castle. Yeah. On Hart Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, supposedly this, this rich guy was building it for his bride, this castle. And then uh -huh. behind it, there's a big mansion. And he was, he dynamited out this Island in the shape of a heart. And then she died or she ran away. I, we don't know anyway mm. uh it's crazy and but that castle what happened to cool. the castle uh, it's still okay. there and according to some of the people that were involved in the movie it was really run down and nobody was using it for anything but like a lot of stuff like that somebody in the mm -hmm. economic development went hey this is a historic site we need to renovate this and make a tourist attraction so yeah it, it, it's Good now move. renovated so mm -hmm. Uh, but it was only, it's only like maybe 120 years old. I think it was around 1900 that the thing was built. Anyway, it's, it's some interesting stuff. Um, all right. What do we do? What do we do now? Mm, oh, I know. It is now time for. <gasps> oh my God. It's taglines. I'm, I'm, I'm tag ill prepared. Lines. I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm a loser. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like, I forgot. I got a job. I got a job to get. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't do a very good Chad. My mouth, my mouse is jumping around. With but... <clears throat> okay. Chad, Ch uh, there's with only Crystal, two uh, playing. Chad. So it's it's 
going to be kind of quick. So but... they must be really good then. Yeah. Mm. Meet Andrew. The road to hell is paved with his victims. Yeah. Mm. That's that's okay. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of lame, really, though, isn't yeah. it? Okay. <clears throat> Alexandria High, class of 81. All the students are going to hell. Except Andrew, because he sent him there. That's dumb. Jeez. Yeah, but it works well with the poster. It works pretty well with the poster. That's so bad. So bad. Yeah, yeah it's got to work better. You know, it's always better when you see him with the post because I'm like, except Andrew, because he put Andrew. him there. Yeah, because it's like a yearbook, right? Andrew's so just not so a very scary that. name. Like Damien. That, you know? that's Damien saying, sounds like, like why? the son of the devil. Why are they focusing on his name? Like don't they don't even have to really use his name. Maybe, I mean, maybe the director like was done by a kid named Andrew when he was in high school. He's like, one day, one day, I'll get my vengeance. But it's just not a scary name if you're gonna have if you're gonna have the son of the devil, you know, Damien. That's what they or, should just or, say. They should just don't say call him son Kevin. of Lucifer. Yeah, they should, they Kevin, son of Lucifer. Meet, it doesn't work. Meet the son of Lucifer. The road to hell is paved with his victims. You know, because like that sounds way better. Alexandria High, class of 81. All the students are going to hell, except the son of Lucifer. I mean, his name could have been Lewis Cipher. Oh, yeah. He did that, right? <laughs> like Lewis Cipher. Wow. And mm. that's been... <laughs> Hanglines mm. with Chad as played by Crystal. Yeah, I don't have that same... He's got that, like... T he's got that twang to his voice. I just... Well, well, he does his, he you know. does his Sammy Castle impression on a lot of that stuff. Yeah, so. he's also got that look of disgust that we're making him do it every time, which is yeah. you know, so hard to capture. <laughs> that, that part he's cut down. I think well, I like it too much. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of the poster. Okay. Oh. Oh my God! I don't know. How I feel. Okay. Okay. Now. There's so much. I gotta. I gotta process this. Okay. Now, part of the problem there is one thing you don't have white font against. A whitish background. I mean, yeah, it's, it's getting lost in the flames there. But you know, and why is it all flame. caps? The whole thing is all caps. It's actually caps serif, yeah. which is a lot. I don't. It makes it very hard to read. Yeah, like I didn't realize they were screaming at me. Alexandria High, class of eighty one. All the students are going to hell. Like that's ridiculous. Well, they're on fire, so I mean, I'd be shouting too. Yeah. I do like the fire bit of it. I think that you're right, Bill. Look, that's a 50 year old man in that photo. Yeah. Come okay. Mm -hmm. You can't convince me otherwise with yeah. his little that orange looks eyes. Like they're trying to make him look like a grown up <laughs> yeah. Damien. High school movies just crack me the hell up because they're, they never look like any high school I've ever been in. And, no. and you know, the things that happen in the classroom would never be tolerated. It, it's like, I don't know. The screenwriters must have had just an awful time in high school because when they write it, it's just like just the most terrible place on earth. Oh, it's like torture. Yeah. Um, I just pulled a couple up, other ones up. This is the uh, uh, French. I didn't crop it or anything. Ooh, nice. That's interesting. That one's yeah. fear, and I don't know what the French. It looks like that's the same one. Uh, hmm. Sent there by his victims, something about his victims. <laughs> the, the, the road to hell is paved with his victims. See, and yeah. that's much better, though. That's what it should just say. Just that. That is all. No, you don't need to meet Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. And then... We call him Andy. Wait. That's kind of nice. He's but... called Lucifer. This is called Lucifer in some. Yeah, some like place, what? That's... That looks like a comic book. Uh... Well, not yeah. even that. I don't know. I like it, but. Um... Mm -hmm. It just feels so different from the other stuff. I like the whole morning star thing, like with the eye. Yeah, yeah, cool. that's cool. And I can't tell what language that is on the border on the bottom. See, so, you it know, he, he really doesn't thing. act to Almost me. Federal. Yeah, like Lucifer. He really does act like Andrew, son of Lucifer, who's, well, you know. Because he's kind of a pussy. Yeah, well. For the most part, like when he like when he kisses the dude in the shower, he's like on the grind. Like, eh, eh. Eh. I'm like, what? Like, that's what I like about the omen. When Damien starts coming into his own, especially like right. when he's like a teenager, he is like he owns it. 
Right. Yeah. And yeah. and that is one thing that I think Satan would own is his confidence. And this guy yeah. is not doing that. If I think that's supposed, probably why it's laughable. I mean, it, it seems like there could have been a good story there. Uh, <clears throat> this kid's not aware of who he is and maybe even would resist it, but eventually gives in. I mean, there's some cool stuff there, but I don't know. At first, I, I was feeling like I'm supposed to kind of feel bad for him. And then next thing you know, at the first inkling that there's something going on, he goes out and kills a dog. It's like, okay, dude, I am not on your side anymore. I can't wait for people to start throwing spears at you. Yeah, kill and that the dog, dog looked really real. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was really real. Okay, what? so comments. Yeah. Uh -oh. Wait, this what? Is, I have to confess. It looked really I, real. I have to make a confession. I, I uh -oh. bought the Blu-ray for this. Okay. <laughs> um, we expected no less. <laughs> and one of the guys, uh, one of the interviews on the Blu-ray is, I've got to look his name up here because I, I think I forgot, is uh, the effects guy. Uh, John Agate. And this was like his first, I think his first credited movie. It, it, he told a bunch of funny stories about how he got into the business, but he just, I think, he doesn't say what the name of the movie is, but he says, I was driving a truck and I was oh, making no. a delivery to this place <laughs> where they were filming and we had to stand and wait while they were doing this. And while they were doing this, this uh, helicopter crashed by accident they just dropped that what rotor that? a little tail rotor to hit they said nobody got hurt or anything attack of the killer I, tomatoes i delivered i think it is because ah. he says i delivered the load and then i went back and uh brought another load and i just i heard these guys talking well if we could just make this explode well he'd been a he was into exploding stuff when he was a kid in <laughs> okay. fact he like studied pipe bombs and developed his own theories about the flame you know, and, and then went into the, into the service and was, was doing okay, well, that stuff. Yeah. And so he goes, uh, Hey, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> he just happens to roll up on, uh, attack of the killer tomato. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um, so long story yeah, short, oh. he, he killed a dog. <laughs> so the dog, uh, so the animals, like when they, when they go into that, that uh, I don't know what it is when the, when the priest goes yeah. into the castle, all those animals that were hanging there, uh -huh. that was those were it was roadkill that the local veterinarian collected and kept in a freezer. They like I don't know if they knew they were going to do this or this you know whatever for a while, but this or, sounds like a really scary ass town where the the veterinarian keeps dead animals in the freezer and local truck drivers like to blow up things. And well, that was he did that in California, I think. But okay. anyway, uh, and the uh, the dog was, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Dead. Put to sleep, or you know, uh, knocked out, euthanized by the veterinarian. Yeah. Oh, so he, was was oh. he was, was alive. alive. He was alive. Yeah, he was alive. Okay. The dog was just. I hate to use the word "put to sleep." He was. Uh, Dear God, yes. Yeah, so he was like knocked out, not euthanized, not killed. Just right, right. Just, just that's effed up. Yeah, I'm dubious. Like, I, you don't, you don't give a dog and then, a freaking what does he do? anesthesia. So, where do we have do a scene? I, do you have a shot of that? I can't remember. No, the, I, you could tell I, I, that it was that. So he's, the way that he's got this the dog was just so yeah. yeah. So he he's taking this dog. He runs his dog into the castle, and then mm. he grab. He's got an axe mm -hmm. or a yeah. hatchet. Shuts the door. Then you hear a dog yeah, yeah, meal, yeah, and then you go in, and the dog's laid out on the table, and there's blood all around his head, and he's like literally like squeezing the dog. He's like pushing on the mm -hmm. dog and holding this cup down there to fill it up with blood, and then he then he drinks it. Kind of pisses that, me off, actually. That, right. that was bizarre. I mean, this you know, it's kind of weird. It, I would agree. My my thought was it, they're their reach is far beyond their grasp in this movie. But this guy was like, if he thought of it, he was going to do it. It There was no taboos. I don't like, I don't I care agree. about the roadkill. If an animal dies by all means, take their remains sure. and use it as you wish. Like I have dead things in my home too. Things die. Okay. That's, that's what happens. Things die. And you know, I like to preserve things that die because I think they're beautiful, but 
to I'll, I'll i'll tell you what someone tries to knock my dog out and oh I'll, I'll freaking yeah. beat a bitch i'll right <laughs> i would freaking my yeah. sweet little uh-uh that's yeah that well, they didn't sad. hit him over the head. <laughs> well, I know, but still. <laughs> right, you know yeah. what, here's I can't the, come up the, with the right word, you know. Uh, here's, they they gave him anesthesia. But here's yeah, yeah. here's the thing. Like, that's dangerous. It, oh, very to much. Do. Sure. And so it's not okay, period. Like, there's no reason to give an animal that, or a person anesthesia. Yeah. The beautiful unless dog, you too. you need to. Yeah. Golden Retriever. And that's all I'm like. saying. Right. Like, like now, the dog could have reacted in a certain way. The dog was not, con it, what pisses me off is they gave the dog anesthesia or knocked him out or whatever, and then didn't even have him connected to things to make sure they were breathing okay. No. Or, mm -mm. No, nope. I get mm -mm. you. I get what you're saying. Now, it was effective. It got us to not like this character if there was any oh, it was, it liking. Was. But then it does, who are we supposed to be rooting for here? Because, um, Okay, the lead act, who I guess, the, I guess the real the lead, arc, the, the archangel the, that doesn't know they're an archangel, right? Yeah. Right, but uh, you know, and I don't want to pick yeah, on anyone, weird. but boy, she just had she had no Oof. presence. She mm -hmm. was she was just there she was, was very not really pretty, a lot there. but the old lady that... who I like because I remember her from one of my favorite trash <laughs> movies, Dante's Peak. I like I like her a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, and and she was fine. But um, but yeah, there's not really a whole lot of people who root for here. You certainly don't root for his mm -hmm. parents; they're awful. And you know, everyone is either a bully or a victim, or there's just the so archangel, thought, but there's nothing there. Christopher, you didn't, or uh, Christopher Crystal, <laughs> you didn't even mention the smoke, the fog, the fog, yeah. <laughs> We haven't gotten all that far yet. Well, oh, okay. like, a, yeah, like, I mean, obviously, I love my. Well, we did briefly touch on the castle and stuff too. Yeah. Which I gotta. So there's a lot of production value in this movie. I mean, they did have a good, decent, pretty decent budget, but I get mm -hmm. it. I think a lot of, well, a million bucks. It was like a million bucks. Yeah. Said and done. That's a lot of money. Yeah, still. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Still, no, even I'm today, sure. I kill for that. You could make something really. I, nice I think. Family, I think if I remember right, they shot right. it for close to like half a million dollars, which is still not so, change. But so then they was, put a lot in post production. I, I miss putting that on the slide. Um, it was, uh, yeah, they said it was eight hundred forty thousand. Okay. On what? What did it say on uh, IMDb? Jeff, never do this. Ah. Always do this. Uh, it says eight hundred forty thousand estimated. I thought I heard the people that made the movie talking about five hundred thousand. And then in Wikipedia, on the same page that says it's eight hundred forty thousand, it also mentions one and a half million. Uh, oh, and has but I think they got money variety. after. Yeah. Well, it was purchased, you know, by uh, was it Afco Embassy? I think um, for distribution. So. Hmm. Um, has a yeah, lot of and effects. the box office was uh, listed somewhere as three million for U.S. and ca Canadian oh. rentals. Oh, well, that, that which is returned on the profit, investment, right? Yeah, so, sure. yeah, that's great. I imagine he sold it and didn't get any of that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, well, I, admittedly, when you watch the last, the last like five, ten minutes, let's say, of the movie. Y'all, I was watching this and I'm like, you know, when they made this, that they were like, because, you know, they did, they had to do a lot in film mm. and, and you know that they're like, look at what we've made. Yeah. It's this yeah, horrible yeah. monstrosity of like, like lightning and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, and it looks like, but you know, at the time they're like, oh, this is the most epic scene so, of all yeah. time. <laughs> when we have the, the first Lucifer during the prologue. <laughs> right, who's running around the castle, and then he there's something magic about that tree that the Lucifers like to run up and hide their face in that tree. I don't yeah. know. That was uh, so dumb. <laughs> the father, father uh, was a father Damon. Yeah, Father Damon has See, that. He's got a scary name. Has that staff, you know that yeah, spear yeah. thing with the with the gold halo around it, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's cool looking. Well, they show that scene where the Lucifer kind of looks at him and goes like this, and then all of a sudden the thing is stabbed through him. So I'm like, I, 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 I frame advance that because I was sort of like thinking, mm -hmm. did he, did the, did the priest throw that at him, or did he make that 
kill him. Well, he makes it kill him, but when you do frame advance, what mm-hmm. you actually see is apparently that staff had a, a line, you know, wire or something attached to it. They pulled it away. And somebody pulls it. You see it pull across the screen off mm-hmm. off screen yeah. in that like one frame. And then the, the camera pans over and then you see it stuck through the Lucifer. Guy. That's brilliant, really. Oh yeah, so, yeah, that's a good. And way I didn't, I couldn't see it at normal speed. You know, it, of course it not. Yeah, funky, but mm-hmm. I couldn't see it. No, it I thought that was well shot. It. That's and and I appreciate that when you in practical mm-hmm. effects, you know. You well, let's need. let's talk about the dodgeball scene then. Oh <laughs> yes! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, that wasn't nearly as well done. Oh, that was funny. That was so funny. Based, and, re- and this is not surprising, I guess, but uh, you know they had a. The guy was had a harness on under his clothes and had a mm-hmm. rope going through the bleachers, and they, they said a bunch of that grips really hanging rough. on the other end. Pull it. Oh, I bet it hurt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. How do you control the the hardness of that? That's anyway. Yeah, that's kind of scary, actually. Like that's and, and a really large glob of uh, yeah, uh, red dyed Carol syrup. The, <laughs> so the effects guy kept talking about I I we had to. He, we had to shoot that scene a bunch of times, and every time somebody had blood in their mouth, so he kept adding different flavors to it. Like he had cherry flavored red carrot, oh, nice and then he had strawberry flavored, yeah. and then he had, anyway. Actually, one that kind of grossed me out though was when he had blood in his mouth and went up to kiss her, and then like oh. mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. gross! It's yeah. like he just spit all. Ugh. I thought that at first I thought he was like out. biting her lip off or something, but mm-hmm. that's, everything was still was like, there. What? There's some disturbing scenes in this. Now, whether yeah. you call that horror or not. Uh, well, well I don't our... want someone spitting in my mouth like that. That is grody moody. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Especially so I had to Andy. Make the yeah. Slimes. Stefan Arngrim. I think it's Stefan. But this guy was a child actor. Um, the two pictures on the side, uh, the one on the top mm. was an episode of Combat. And the next one down with the hat on was an episode of The Virginian. Oh. And then he did two years on Land of the Giants. He's the one in the, oh, in okay. the guy's hand. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so anyway. Yeah. Irwin Allen, Land of the Giants. And, and unfortunately, in terms of billing, this was probably the peak. Mm-hmm. If you look through his credits... At least now, anyway, he's got. I think he's got like sixty-one credits, and I think he did lots of other stuff. I, he was some one of those guys that did lots of uh, uh, performance things. Hmm. You know, he had, was had a band and he wrote and did all kinds of other stuff. But as you get later and later, it's most a lot of them are un, you know, like uncredited or yeah. they're not a name. It's a, <clears throat> a job name, you know, like. Um, well, let's be real, like. It, the acting in this movie is not great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I mean, and what is he going to show? What's he going to put in his reel from this movie? The no. kissing scene in the shower or him? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Or just glaring at people from far away. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think he was, I don't think he was at all the worst thing in the movie. In fact, I, I think he was actually good in, in a number of scenes. He just wasn't given a whole lot. Once he became, you know, the son of Satan. It just got silly um, because again, he is not really all that threatening. He gets taken out. You know, the demon, I don't understand. He gets taken out by a priest, an old priest real easily. I guess he takes himself out so that he can be immediately reborn. What's the point of sending these archangels to earth to take out Lucifer? If he can just immediately get born again, we've got to go through this nonsense every 18 years or so. Mm-hmm. And then the, there's three angels, but they aren't all born at the same time or something, 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 something. I, I don't know yeah, the so rules weird. of this film. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I should have written down everything that guy was droning on at the beginning of the movie, but I, I kind of lost interest. Um, you know, it, there was a lot going on, but I didn't need to know. And so I don't understand. And then what? He kills a dog, makes a bully grow breasts kills a couple people with zombies this is this is and very did you get vicious so we had the scene where he's standing on the 
shoreline and we see the riverboat tour go by yeah. and we hear the loudspeaker. So if you if you paid attention to that, then the people that are being raised from the dead, the zombies, those are all the people that worked on the castle. Oh, they just buried them right there, huh? That's who's buried there. That that's what oh, the guy okay. said. I don't know if that's true <laughs> or not, but that's what that's what the the loudspeaker guy said. And they and, and they buried them with their shovels, which I thought was very thoughtful. He mm-hmm. said they they had to wait quite a while to get that shot because it was it was a totally you know, they didn't work it out in cooperation with anybody. They just had to wait until the riverboat came by. <laughs> <laughs> None of those people signed a form either. All right. These stories are are hard to believe, but they, no, two, different believe people, two different people said almost the entire film is 80 yard, you know, at least like over mm. half of it, like two thirds, mm-hmm. because... The guy that was supposed to be recording that was uh, had a little too much fun with uh, extracurricular substances and kept forgetting to press the record button. I 1,000% believe that. Crystal, does that sound like something that would never yeah. happen in low-budget indie filmmaking? <laughs> that, but uh, that's why uh, the director is supposed to say. Mm-hmm. Roland? That he, that, Speed? Yeah speed I, I, like like that's the director's job actually and so he's supposed to get the yes from the he, audio guy <laughs> he told agate and, and agate's like well who else did you tell you're the only one i can't mm-hmm. I, i'm too embarrassed to tell anybody and uh so they had to they had to go back and and adr like everything and it turns out that the writer director frank Lelogia did the voice of jesus christ in that oh, okay. passion play thing, mm-hmm. uh, which they said was a shame because the guy, the actual actor, had a great voice. He said it, he did a good job. But mm. anyway, so yeah, and it was cold. So here's Stefan Arngrim running around this castle with this practically naked Stefan stuff <laughs> on. Yeah, and that that He's- stuff coming out of his <laughs> mouth was. He's wearing less clothes than Vampirella. He must have been freezing to death. Uh, yeah, the stories. There's the so much man nudity in this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is. Like so something for the awkward. ladies. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's uh, Bill mentioned Elizabeth Hoffman, and uh, yeah, she does do a nice job. I think. Yeah, yeah. she does. Being believable as. Uh, so you have these uh, three archangels who are supposed to be Raphael, Mikael, and uh, Gabriel. And uh, apparently they keep getting reincarnated on Earth. Um, and this time, Mikael is reincarnated as, uh, what was her name? Margaret. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Gabriel is reincarnated as, was it Susan? I think a high school girl. Yeah. And so the father Damon, who was killed, yeah, eighteen years ago. I guess this is an eighteen-year cycle, huh? Or something. Yeah, you know, this is also kind of a ripoff that Saint uh, Lucifer gets to come back as this powerful being that can raise zombies and grow breasts. But the archangels, yeah, they just, they just have like what an AARP card or something. I mean, they've I guess got they no just, powers at all. They have to have that staff. Well, they have to also be three and one there was a bunch of lines about that that were yeah supposed to, yeah that were supposed to be kind of inspiring but i guess um so at the end when they all came together and the ghost the force ghost of father damon and his sister or wife or whatever she was and the high school student they all stood together and just waved their arms back and forth like a i don't know <laughs> oh uh, and like uh, I thought they were gonna like make wings. I thought they were gonna actually yeah. become like an yeah. angel. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Budget <laughs> ran out. Well, you could tell there was a I mean, there was one of those where you, you probably would have shot it over again if you weren't a indie production where he's running up in the castle and he does like Crystal said he does his arms over the yeah. top and swirls them around and it gets caught on his head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it got caught. It lit yes, absolutely it got caught on his head. Yeah, like to pull it down. that time for take two. Yeah, that was that was funny. That was funny. I just don't understand. Like he didn't like doing that was so ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. and then how, how he looked like he was hiding in the tree. I was like, what? 
what are they thinking? Like what? I, I don't know what that yeah. that tree was supposed to be something, but I don't know what it was. But the whole thing, like, like he, like he does this thing, y'all, where he's like, 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 <laughs> like it's so like he's exit like, like, stage hiding. right, yeah. And it's like, well, there was this, well, there was this huge tree this too that had sort of a concave side to it, and both of these lucifers run up to that tree and. Go in there with their backs to them, like so like weird. They'll never it's be like able a to see like, yeah, like yeah. We're just like, hey, he's hiding in the corner. So <laughs> why I'm like, why is this happening? Sorry, Freddie. That I didn't <laughs> understand. Uh, so yeah, it's more fun watching Crystal reenact the movie than it watching is. the movie. It is ridiculous. Um, I just I, I watch that with my mouth rawr, open. I'm not going to look at that, oh, boy. <laughs> I kind of like that top picture. Yeah, the top picture. Well, yeah, okay. the top picture is good. I don't even right. mind the, the push-ups one at the bottom. What would you think it in the middle? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come back like, when you yeah, got all hair was, in your uh, chest. He was Lucifer. being uh, androgynous. That's that's what they were thinking. It reminds about. me of Buffalo Bill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Before. Yeah, um, got and then he's a... got the uh, contacts there, which apparently were two piece. Oh God! What they they said he had to put in. They had white ones to put in first, and then the like the cat's eye ones. Yikes! Oh, that sounds over horrible. That sounds painful. Oh, he said. Yeah. Well, if you uh, if you look at him, <laughs> his eyes are nastily red in that shot. Mm. Yeah, well, anyway, the best the, the, the best thing ever: soft contact lenses. <laughs> Great so, invention. what's interesting about the gym scene with him doing the push-ups is he. Seems like he is upset with himself that he killed the boyfriend. You know, yeah. he gets all upset yeah. afterwards. So he I is a it. he's a conflicted Lucifer, isn't he? Well, they well, get him. They get him Damien to almost was too. Like when Damien to, was figuring out who he was, right? Remember, like right. when he goes, when he was getting older. Little, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, I didn't. I, I it they it didn't translate as well. No, it this. didn't. It didn't come across. Well, Nick Al gets him to recite <laughs> the Lord's Prayer only every once in a while. He'd change a word that had a big difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and listen, there was plenty. There was plenty of time in this in the runtime of this movie, especially in the middle section, which I think really kind of got a little flabby. That they could have done a little bit more with this conflict. That would have been an interesting story, but yeah. as is, nah. Uh, there's we're getting ready to yep. uh, sw swap blood, I guess. Looking a little cold in there. Got the uh, so, dinosaur headed priest behind him. <laughs> Why did he keep visiting the other girl? I'm I'm really just. I don't know. Okay, this no. is the part that does confuse me. I'm like I'm probably trying to make sense out of nonsense, but like the archangel, the the you know the the main chick or whatever, like. <sighs> Why didn't he just kill her? I don't get it. She kept having dreams with him, but yeah, yeah. and they they were yeah. like, you know, getting smacked there, like, and it's like, what? He seemed like he was trying to corrupt her, which yeah, some of the time, but other times it seemed like uh, it was the other way around. You know, see, that would have yeah, been an interesting story too to make her more the central yeah. character, and and you know, these forces are battling which way is she going to go, and that could have been interesting, but yeah. I There's agree. just a lot of undeveloped ideas in this. There's a lot of ideas in this film. And I wish yeah. they had focused on a few and developed them further. Well, there was clearly a lot of passion here. There's a lot. I mean, there was a lot, you know, this is, this is like some good composed shots. Yeah. Look at so that. That's cool. It's got that, that backlit fog that crystal loves so much. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's well lit. It's well done. I mean, that looks yeah. really cool. And I love the idea this... of the crucifixion. Yeah. You know? They have this weird uh, sort of passion play or the crucifixion mm -hmm. going on being reenacted <laughs> over here. And then over there, we have him like, I don't know what they're he's doing. They're doing the passion of the Christ. Yeah. Drinking dog's blood and uh, killing the <laughs> uh, killing the other girl or, or, or swapping blood with her. I don't know what the deal was. And then his, I assume this is because the archangels are there. I don't know if it was Lucifer or not, but the blood start to come out of the guy's head. No, yeah, because they were water, actually yeah. doing they were actually crucifying him. Because he's on Who the cross. Was? It, obviously Lucifer was crucified okay. or whatever. Okay. He, they were actually he was actually being crucified. But then everybody in the crowd starts to 
to get it too. Yeah. Well, it was like stigmata. Well, I mean, it was stigmata like, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. I think that that the only thing that I saw from the crowd was the crown of thorns. Hmm. If that's the, what that was, because it also looked like the it crowd was, kind was of getting it on blood. coming out of their head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of them, several of them got it. I love the the one woman that runs down her forehead on it drips on her glasses and, see mm -hmm. but see that's the thing that's what i'm saying like that that didn't come from here that actually came from up here and <laughs> the, okay and i'm bothered by it because i got real bothered by like things that are super unrealistic i don't yeah. care it's fine but like if you had stuff drip on your glasses you wouldn't automatically assume it was blood you would go oh god you know, and then see that right, what right. It, you know, but she's just like you take it off and you'd look up, probably. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but that's the director. It's like, come on, what would you what would you realistically do? Like, if you're gonna have extras that do that, they better mm -hmm. if they're gonna be a featured extra, they better do it right, you know. Yeah, and again, this is a cool concept that these people are watching a passion play, <laughs> right? And right. then yeah. and then he makes them actually experience what it would really be like, which is the kind of dick move Lucifer would do. But again, it didn't it didn't come across with the power that it that it should have. It just ended mm -mm. up just being a bunch of extras running around getting hit by you know lightning bolts, which were well, pretty well done <laughs> for non CGI for for early special effects. They, it wasn't bad. Some of the I big think. zap and glow stuff when he starts glowing and, and getting all, yeah, that, that looked pretty silly. A lot of it is definitely like the way it was shot and the sound effects. Cause I think if they had, if he had used, when he was doing it on the Christ figure, mm -hmm. if he had used like the nailing sound, mm -hmm. it would have been more effective and driven home what they were trying to do, you know, what they yeah, were actually look at like. This. And that's the end of Lucifer. <laughs> this is like this is like those Levi ads from the seventies. I mean, this it, it reminds me a bit of like the ending of the Manitou, where you know we're trying to show. See this, this folks. This is what special effects were before Star Wars. This is what passed for special effects, and we were we were reasonably happy with them. But then Star Wars came out, and it was like, oh my god, this is decades decades ahead of everything else. And instantly, things that had been acceptable became cheesy. Mm -hmm. There's a new paradigm. Um, yeah, so back on the budget for just a second. The uh, So La Loja rated, raised um, $540,000. And then Avco Industry invested another 300000 to complete the film for worldwide distribution. So that's where the eight hundred forty thousand comes from. Where the one and a half million mm -hmm. comes from, I don't understand. And it says that three hundred thousand was needed to complete the film, special effects, music, music and mixing. Um, from Peter Kieran working with his company, Visual Concept Engineering, hmm. for like four months to complete wow. the film's final sequence. So. And frankly, I think this is, I mean, we're laughing at it now, but it's, it's pretty grandiose for back then. Yeah. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You know, when they created this, they're like, look at this. Cause that last bit, it's like, there is scratches all over that film and then weird lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. It's like way over the top. And you know, they're like, this is a masterpiece. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it yep. was, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the zombies. With the cornflakes. Who, um, who, who are supposed to be pretty old, but they're well-dressed and their hair is... And they're not than... dressed in old, older clothes. That's yeah, not they, how... If they built they the castle, been, they would have... Yeah, they wouldn't have been dressed right. like that. Died around, you know, pre-1950 at the, at the latest, probably. And they would not be wearing ties to work... No, but they serve their purpose. They're standing in front of the lights, and they had yeah. they're nicely backlit and everything, well, and they they killed a bunch of people. And we have well, now we can say close up. I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. No, no I was just going to say now, now we can say we have zombies. And if I remember the trailer correctly, the zombies were pretty prominently displayed in it. Uh, this is so weird. Uh, uh, Frank Lelogia was strongly opposed to having zombies in the film. However, 
his cousin, producer Charles Lalogia, maybe it's Lalogia, Lalogia, insisted on having zombies since zombie movies were popular at the time. That may well have got the sale to Avco Industry. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. good. If it got him another, if somebody said, hey, we'll give you $300,000 if you stick zombies in your film, it's like, well, okay. So the guy who played uh, Lucifer there at the beginning, Richard J. Silverthorne, did the makeup oh. work on the film. Well, he did a good job um, on himself. He was a good looking, he was a better looking Lucifer than Andy. Yeah. Okay. So misogynistic. What about that? At the, the first scene we see in the high school, there's a janitor going, and this <laughs> woman is walking by with papers, and the janitor goes, "Woo! I'd like to give you some of that or something yeah. like that." Yeah. What did he say? I, I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Mm. It's like, okay, Oscar, back to uh, HR. We gotta talk. We gotta talk to you again. Yeah, I mean that's all movies. Woo! Movies, I like that. So. You know, that's what he says. And then, the, and then that whole classroom scene where they handed out the test. Yeah. And this Tony character, who is the sort of the instigator. Well, there was all so much about that. So they, they're all nude in the shower. Yeah. I think he he's gay. Is the teasing point, the though, other guy he? about being about. Uh, right. I don't know what he says to him, but I'm going to give me a kiss. And he goes over to him and they lock lips. And then something about Lucifer's power, they're not able to unrelease it. And then after they finally pull apart and he falls on the shower floor and gets up, tells his friend of his, you're not telling anybody that. And I'm going, oh, oh, what about oh, the other guys in the shower? We're telling what? everybody about this. <laughs> There's a bunch of guys in that shower. Oh. You're only telling one guy not to tell anybody. I question I mean. the whole bullying strategy here. It's like, hey, I think this yeah, guy might be gay. So I'm going to walk up to him nude and kiss him. That'll fix his little red wagon. Yeah. I okay, Tony. What the hell? It's weird. And he looked it's like he was so trying weird. to do John Travolta. It looked like he was kind of going for a Saturday oh, Night yeah. Fever vibe. And, and he's way too old. He's horrible to his girlfriend. Uh, none of it makes any sense. So, And let's be real. Like... I don't understand why there's so many naked boys in this and none of them have good bodies. So it's confusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, they're all just thin minis. And that is not, a th that's what? No. no. Are you trying to put unrealistic physical? Uh, yeah, whatever. They're all yeah. just thin dudes. They like, are. why are they? No, I think that they're too thin, personally. Okay. So like, I think it's unattractive. And I'm like, why are they all like the most... It's just very odd. These okay. are the only it's actors really they could odd. get that would be butt naked on camera, I guess. And I mean, when he flipped around and it was like full, I was like, yeah, oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's well, there's not, the R I rating really, there. I was thinking we were only doing booty, and I was like, okay, fine. And then I see that and I'm like, oh, he just ruined my day. <laughs> ruined my he dinner. just ruined my day with this douche canoe. Like he's so great. He's such a, he's such a hateable character. So he, he honestly, he might be one of the better actors in the movie because I hated him. Right. I yeah. hated him. He's the one with the gun. He's the mm -hmm. one that yeah. uh, mm -hmm. boinks this girl in the, I don't know where it is. In, in like, the, like the uh, Freddy Krueger steam room. Yeah. 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 Some back hallway and then hops up and leaves. And, and uh, anyway, um, then, Smacks the guy around for breaking into his car, or smacks his girlfriend around. Smacks his girlfriend because yes, the guy broke into his car. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. she must have left the door unlocked. Uh, right. Yeah, he's not a good guy. And and literally, when I first saw him on the screen, he was so. I was trying to figure out: is this uh, a girl or a guy? You know, he had that. He had that. <laughs> He's kind of well, almost like a Farrah Fawcett hairdo, almost. Mm -hmm. You know the the well. Anyway. The shower scene solved that mystery. That did. It did yes. solve that mystery. And it wasn't it much of a mystery. Changed but... it at the end too. Odd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You knew he was going to die, but I, I did not have that particular death on my bingo card. Mm -mm. Yeah. Kill. Yeah. Uh, so. Because, mm -mm. But but let me tell you, that kind of guy gets boobs. And of course, he's like, well, my life's over. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
let me see the uh yeah and the father and that whole thing with the mother he we have that birthday scene yeah where somehow she magically didn't light one candle and when andrew slash lucifer lights a match to light the last candle all the lights and all the candles go out and then is the father asking the mother to bring the cake over there so he could see in the drawer to see the flashlight. There's only one candle on it. I didn't understand yeah. why he asked her to bring know. the cake over. We odd. just had to drop it. That was just simply to get to so they could drop it, which is just an uncomfortable scene. It's like a mm -hmm. and then they start so fighting each other. She falls down, right. reaches up, iron <laughs> falls on her <laughs> head. Iron on her head. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. and then there's the scene where the father shoots her. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah, that's the payoff to those two characters that we couldn't care less about. So yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But I think I think we were supposed to because then they cut. Oh, here's the dad in the <clears> bar. <throat> it's like, oh, I, you know, really, I don't care about this guy at all. Let's let's do something else. But I think he likes uh, mailmen are an integral part of his towns. You know, because hmm. there's a mailman in lady in white too that we see that that i think it might be sydney classic i should look that up but anyway um one last thing i wanted to mention so this uh stefan arngram his mother his name is norma mcmillan and she did voice acting mm -hmm. in the 60s she played casper the friendly ghost Oh, that's cute. On the cartoon show, <laughs> she was also Polly Purebred on Underdog. Oh, Underdog. Wow. So anyway, kind of interesting. Got a, got a family. So I don't know. I think I'm done talking about this. You guys got other stuff you want to talk uh, about? Uh, I think <laughs> we... Man, we, talk, we actually talked a lot about this. There's a lot to yeah. say about this one. Yeah. Well, there like... is. And it's all kind mm -hmm. of strange. It's very strange. Uh, stories. I'm sure I'll think of something I should have said. Uh, oh, I'm sure. Me too. I'll I think of do. some scene. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it for Fear No Evil. Check it out on Shudder. And I'm actually kind of glad we watched this because I, I, I do me see too. a connection between the look and feel of parts of this with Lady in White. It shouldn't have been. <laughs> but some of that is there maybe he figured out he was better at doing that kind of a feel uh all right we do have some feedback yay first up <clears throat> and i don't know who wants to read this uh, i'll read it because because i suspect i might be the idiot who made the statement that he's on, on it's on episode 236 it. the incubus from the letter lecturing hugh one vu i i don't know i sounds like a bot but makes a good point um Quote, someone, and I'm thinking it might have been me, there wasn't a lot of rape in horror flicks going on during the 80s. Um, let's see. The Entity, which you mentioned, Humanoids from the Deep, I Spit on Your Grave, Inseminoid, Galaxy of Terror, Evil Dead, Night of the Demon, Extro, The Beast Within, and those are just the ones that I know of already. I okay. always say they're so rapey. I in say fairness, so rapey. Yeah, in did. fairness, yeah. I, I compare everything <laughs> to like the Japanese movies that I watch, which are just like beyond the pale. But yeah, if there's yes, only, you know. It's a good point. If there's it's only one point. or two rapes, that doesn't count for Bill. It's the. Yeah. <laughs> in fairness, I none mean, of these. Yeah, none of these are as rape. unpleasant as the rapes in uh, Incubus. And I'm including Humanoids from the Deep, which you would think would be. Yeah. On a different note. I like how the poster shown at 2713 has the figure silhouetted there, thereby preserving the enigma of it. The image shown in the poster at 2824 could be a victim from the film. Okay, so yeah. I had to go check this out. These were on our show. So ours was the, the main poster of the Incubus had the silhouette and then mm -hmm. all those mm -hmm. slogans down the side. Mm -hmm. You know, he is the destroyer and, you know, stuff like that. And then the the one at twenty eight twenty four is the one that was like a, a face with flaming hair, mm -hmm. like and and we said what the hell does that have to do with the movie? 
Well, he's, <laughs> yeah. they could have been could have been a victim. A victim. Yeah. yeah fair yeah. enough. Okay. Well, appreciate it, Letcherling. I I love your yes. handle. So, yeah. I, I I would assume that you are an expert on this subject from that title, the Letcher. <laughs> the Letchering. Not not that you would do it, just that it's you know it's, it's lecherous. Anyway, appreciate the comment, and uh, we stand corrected. <laughs> Uh, episode hmm. 240, Luther the Geek. Kind of a short comment from Jerry Chandler. What? Jerry Crystal? Chandler has a short comment? Crystal? One short comment. Luther the Geek. It's um, a movie. Yeah. It's a valid that point. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, <laughs> a, a, a two or three on Alligator, episode 241 which just came out a couple days ago as we record this. Uh, Bill from Kevin Clayton. Absolutely love this film. Used to watch it with mom as a kid. See, that's a good mom right there. Aww, it is. That's yeah, sweet. Is. That's a good memory. Yeah, it is. And Crystal from Ralph Miller. Ralph. The manhole and the whites. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I read ahead. The manhole <laughs> and the white swallow, dear God, were names for fine drinking establishments. Honest, they were. Dear God, the yeah. white swallow. Yeah, uh, that's that sounds like one of those windowless bars. <laughs> Horrible, but funny. You know, I heard about a bar. Somebody told me this once. I never saw one, but they said it was a bar where the uh, the restroom had a common wall obviously with the bar and the urinals were mounted on that wall and that it was a one-way or two-way mirror i guess so on the outside it looked like a mirror from inside you could watch the other people <laughs> that, while you peed okay while you peed That's and of so course if you were standing on the other side looking in the mirror and laughing and pointing and stuff you know yeah um anyway the wow. manhole well that comes from the I think there was a, a quote at the beginning about, and look at the hole we got. And then we started talking about manholes and what a weird <laughs> word. I think Bill said what a weird word. And <laughs> oh, we I of went course, off on a tangent. Yeah. Yes. No, like we never do. Yeah. And now here we have Jerry Chandler covering oh. a lot of stuff. Everything wow. from DragonCon yeah. to alligators. Mm -hmm. This is so. the Jerry I know. <gasps> Oops. No, no. I accidentally. <gasps> I just hit one. That's okay. There, there it is. I see. Never mind. I need to not touch the workflow. Uh, I, yeah. I X you're, something you're out. Do, do, do you're there. editing. Z. I. It's and, on my phone. I read it from my phone. So. Yeah, we'll still be able to read it. Yeah, yeah I, I can, can still see it. I'm sorry. That's it. <sighs> I'm sorry. So go ahead, Bill. Oh, okay. Jerry Chandler says. Covering the pre-review chat first because, well, it's about Dragon Con, Crystal. Yay. And I agree with this. You did fine with moderating the panels. As for putting you up as a mod this quickly, Derek has seen your work, and there were a number of us pushing you to the track. Indeed, you did a great That's job. Nice. Jeff, Chad, Bill, I have seen lawyers walk into court with less prep than Crystal does for a panel. <laughs> I have seen lawyers sitting outside the courtrooms in the morning doing less last-minute pre-case research and study than Crystal does sitting outside a panel room doing research and studying. If she's like this with every episode of Decades of Horror, she needs her paycheck doubled as soon as possible. I agree. Double yeah. her Wrong. paycheck. Double. Paycheck doubled. Yeah. Yep, doubled. <laughs> That's yeah. Double that zero. That's right. Two. Double Two zero. makes it really great. Yep. Bill and Crystal, I did the chair <laughs> counts, and I was, with help, wrangling the lines for the Peachtree 1 and 2 panel room at the horror track. There were just over 200 chairs. The panels that you had, the panels you had that were hitting close to room capacity were in the 200-person range. The yeah. ones that, that weren't were still doing well over the 100 you estimated. Jeff, yeah. Dragon yeah. Con TV. Yeah, we did. We did. We had a great turnout. The horror track just had a terrific turnout. Uh, Derek should be proud. Did you say 70,000 people? Somebody I think yeah, that's what they're saying. 66 to mm -hmm. 70,000. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. impressive. Even spread out over five hotels, it's crazy. 
Yeah. Jeff, DragonCon TV is $10 for a year of programming that you can stream on a computer or mobile device. When you plop the $10 down before or just after the con, you get all the programming, virtual and live panels, shown on the CCTV in the host hotels and DragonCon TV programming going back as far as 2008. Oh, wow. Wow, that's hmm. a good deal. That's cool. One, yeah. Once Brian and his crew get some rest after the con, they start adding new stuff that was recorded at the most recent con, but not aired due to how much programming there already was. And now, alligator. That was just. The I'm plane. gonna. I'm gonna look that up, and I'm gonna subscribe. To yeah, that I, I, I think I might too. Yeah, I for first, ten dollars, you get it yeah, all the way back. That's a lot. That's awesome. That's a good deal. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I can. Mm -hmm. I maybe watch myself when I was younger and had more hair. And now, <laughs> alligator. I first saw this movie when it made its network TV debut. I loved it. More importantly, as the years went by, I continued to love it. It holds together so much better than many, many, many other movies made in the wake of Jaws that were meant to cash For in sure. on that film's success. I think it does it in part because it has more than a few sly humor pokes at the genre, but mostly because it's just well put together and has a great monster and a great cast. Yeah. Robert Forster makes this film work in so many ways. He doesn't overdo it. He isn't playing it as a goof, and he's not trying to ape the performance in Jaws to get that vibe. He's a grungy, down-to-earth, down-to-the-street level, every guy who has to fight a somewhat real-world monster. He makes his performance relatable and believable, and that makes his struggle with the monster seem more real and makes it matter. The rest of the cast is great as well, especially everyone's favorite nearsighted vampire, Henry Silva. <laughs> <laughs> Reference to both The Thirst, 1979, and the documentary Not Quite Hollywood. I love The Alligator. It worked on screen so much better than many creatures in such movies, maybe even better than a few of the sharks in the various Jaws franchise movies. I have a big nostalgic thing for it as well in that it probably freaked me out more than Jaws. I grew up in the water, having spent a lot of my single-digit years in Virginia Beach. Sharks were never a big issue, and even if one was, the solution was just to stay out of the water for a few days. An alligator grown to insane size? It could be anywhere I lived, and a threat outside the winter months. That messed with my young brain since there were so many places one could be, and such urban legend stories were everywhere back then. Fortunately, I grew out of such fears and worries in my mid-teens. Then I moved to Central Florida oh, in my yeah. mid-twenties and discovered that Alligator was almost a Florida documentary. Yep, that's like yeah. that's like Alligator Town. That in Louisiana. Oh, yeah. You know. Every time I watch it, we've talked about this before. Every time I watch a true crime show from Florida <laughs> and the person has disappeared and they haven't found the body, they always and assume it's been dumped in the swamp yep. and the alligators ate it. That's yep. Like, With good that's reason. That's so scary. That isn't, it? no, they have pigs in Silence of the Lambs. So that's a great one, uh, uh, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. That's Back, and that's what we got around here. We got lots and lots of hog confinements. I get. I think North Carolina does too. They used to be uh, maybe second in the hog production. But uh, Deadwood, in Deadwood, they used to dump Ooh, all the I bodies know. in the Chinese district's hog lot. Oh, the pigs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it, mm. Jerry. Thanks also, yes, Jerry. Ralph. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Thanks, uh, everybody. Kevin Ralph. Clayton, thanks, I believe, is a new one. And awesome. uh the Letcherling, please. Letcher, <laughs> is that Letcherling? But what's the what's the other it's I don't know. I was trying to figure out Holvu, if that was a... Holvu, is that an L? Who won Vu? God, it's probably something simple and we're missing it. I figure it's something who won view. It's probably something dirty and it's going completely over our heads. Well, that's possible. Really who won view. I'd expect no less from someone called the Letchering, which is Letterling is actually a pretty good name for a movie. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, actually, that would be a good one. Double feature with knob goblins. The oh, yeah. Yes. yes. All right. Um, you know what, folks? We love comments. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of ways to stay in touch. <laughs> Leave comments here on the uh, Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel, or uh, you can... Uh, Make comments on Gruesome Magazine's HNR and DOH podcast Facebook group, which is getting fairly active. We're starting to get more and more people post to that, cool. which okay. I appreciate. Trailers yeah. and news and stuff like that. Um, or you can send things to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. Yeah, keep us on our toes. If, if I say something stupid like 70s horror movies didn't have a lot of rapes in them, you just get on there and start banging that keyboard and tell me how wrong I am. 
Yeah, we appreciate well, you, you were wrong because you well, said 70s and not 80s. That's true. And you, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And you didn't mention Bill. the Shaw brothers at all. So, uh, right. I'm just right. kidding. Uh, so, oh, I love Bill. I don't like picking on Bill, even if it's oh, a joke. Oh, it's fine. Um, it's done with love. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, comment on the. Uh, what did you thought of the movie? What was the, some of the best stories or about your first experience with the movies? Uh, grandpa or grandma were corrupting you when you were five <laughs> or something. Uh, but uh, also make recommendations or show us where we're wrong or what you like, et cetera. So we love that stuff. Yeah, this was a weird one. I'm really yeah, interested to see how many people saw this one before. Well, yeah. actually, uh, <clears throat> just a little bit ago, <clears throat> apparently... Uh. Christopher G. Moore saw this as a youngster and oh, yeah. liked it quite a bit. Then. Mm -hmm. uh, look what happened to him. And and uh, but he was thinking maybe I need to watch that again. I don't know. See, uh, like all right, <clears throat> group believers. That's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we have tackle. We tackle one chosen by Crystal. What are we doing? It's going to be one that. So many people hate. I liked it. I I haven't seen it in a long time though. I saw a little snippet of it today. Witchboard. Ooh, so okay. yeah. I mean, this is a fun one. I Try remember it. it being good. I literally only saw like 30 seconds of it mm -hmm. on Shutter, like really quickly. It was live or something. And I was like, oh, oh, it's on Shutter. Great. It's been so long know. since I've seen it. I think it'll be almost like new to me. I have not seen it. Me and too. I'm thinking, yeah. which board is that like a Ouija, Ouija board? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was better than Ouija board, the one that came out like five years ago. But oh, yeah. It Well, well it's been it, it should time. at least be. I better just keep fun. my mouth shut for 80s. Well, the 80s fun, right? It's got some good actors in it. So, you know, all right. hearing you guys say yeah. the, the name out loud, it, this is literally the first time it occurred to me that it's a play on the word switchboard. Yeah. Right yeah. over my head. These things kind of an, it's kind never of, occur to me. It really would have been a better name for the Ouija board, really. Mm -hmm. But the Ouija board came out before the switchboard. So that that's probably why. I'm going to yeah. have to see if I can find that because I just saw a tweet from some fairly well-known horror fan slash well-known actor that was like, my wife just pointed out that such and such movie title was a pun for such and such. Yeah. And it, I, I didn't get it either. I, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, well, I, I, I did not get alienation, which every single human on earth. Oh, maybe that was that. you. Maybe that was you. That yes. was, yeah, it was probably me. Yeah. That sounds, yeah. Wait, what was it supposed to be? Alienation. But it's, but it's, you know, like when you're alienated, alienation. Oh, good. I'm not the only one. I'm in oh, a state of alienation. Vindication. In alienation. <laughs> the alien, anyway. Oh, no, wow. See, I did not get look that. Look at that. Wow, this is fascinating. Your expression is exactly what my expression was <laughs> when my <laughs> wife explained this to me. So now I, get I to can't, see it. Yeah. I can't believe I. And I want you to point something out something so simple. Like, wow. I just called you a well known horror actor. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Golly. I shouldn't be laughing. That is me. like, dear God, how did I not get? <gasps> wow. This is like watching a female me going through all the motions. Like this is, I, I, like, I just, I, my I... mind is blown. Oh my gosh. The I'm only really... thing you're missing is my wife giggling in the background at what a gullible person you are that not to have figured that out. So. Yeah, like yeah, it's great. Sometimes I just don't think that hard about. Yeah, alienation. It's a nation of aliens. Of what? I'm not going to think this of, over. That's, you know? And that's, yeah. Right. That, oh, <laughs> it's so, so simple and brilliant. I love that punny stuff. Like that is. Much. <laughs> well, bring on the puns for yeah. sure. Catch us again like, here in two weeks for yeah. more witty repartee like this. Every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. Uh, another great horror movie, again, from the 80s, as only decades of horror can do it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Say good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>